Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a Premier League presentation. We're going to be bringing you guys a game from the Reaver Cup, which is the second cup for our series here. And we're going to see these two teams going at it, Alliance and Fnatic, to start things off. A little bit early in the morning for me, admittedly, but what a game to wake up to. Fnatic versus Alliance. It's going to be a pretty interesting matchup here. It looks like Hani won't be available for this game here, so we do have... Stand in Mon, he's run under like a dozen different tags, so I'm not sure exactly who that is specifically. But uh, we're going to see him come on in, and uh, this will be interesting to see here. So jumping on into the draft here, I uh, would like to warmly welcome back to the cast, my co-caster here, Triumphal Man. How's it going? Hey guys, I'm feeling pretty good tonight. Now, I just want to quickly say, Fnatic are one of my, if not my favorite team, and I'm looking forward to seeing them actually again. Unfortunately, well, I know you were talking about this earlier, Blaze, how you... Talking about how Fnatic were at one time on par with Alliance, and obviously Alliance now, they're the toast of the town. They are very, very scary indeed. But I just want to go back to February. February, they uh, Fnatic had a 27-8 win rate. In March, they had a 31-18, and now lately, they've had a 14-19 and then a 4-9 in uh, in May. So they're in a bit of a slump at the moment. But you were talking about how Fnatic have had people missing in action for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, with uh, Fly kind of in and out with military training a lot in the past month or month and a half, it's been a little bit limiting on them. Uh, no tell is I had to opt in for the draft and uh, change up the roles a little bit to make sure they can compensate for his absence. And then, of course, Hani has had to pick up a couple of stand-ins here and there himself. So as a whole, it kind of feels like Alliance, although they were on par with Fnatic very, very equal only a couple of months ago, now they've had the opportunity to just completely go miles ahead with their opportunities to go to Shanghai and play over there and with Fnatic kind of just playing with three or four players in a lot of their games it's been very very limiting as far as their progression as a team their coordination and their improvement with their overall strategies so right now I definitely think Alliance are the favorites honestly probably one of the best teams in the western scene if not the world uh, but uh, well, of course, Fnatic still have a lot of fight in them. They have a very awesome, aggressive style, whether it's split push or just huge balls to the walls aggression. We'll have to see what they have in store for us here. Uh, but to start things off, the draft will come out pretty early for Alliance, showing their hand, setting up Admiral Bulldog with his very signature Lone Druid here, and that should be an interesting sight to see. Yeah, I would be quite shocked if Admiral Bulldog doesn't end up playing the Lone Druid, of course. In fact, we're discussing uh, pick rates, and he, out of all of the heroes picked, he's played the Lone Druid the most, 58 picks in competitive matches, so, you know, we know where it's going to go. And actually, it's actually one of his more aggressive heroes, just short of, I think, Furion is his most... Uh, Furion, obviously, with the teleport, is the one that he uses the most in team fights and gets around to a lot of the fights, but Lone Druid is actually... He's surprisingly aggressive with it and participates a lot in the early battles, and I think it's probably... Partially the obviously the armor bug to blame a little bit. Obviously that's getting changed in the upcoming patch. But I had something else I wanted to say. I forgot what it was for now, but we'll just roll on to the bands. Pretty standard bands there with the Nyx taken out along with the Lifestealer. Of course, Lifestealer is pretty much flavor of the month at the moment. You almost will never see him not banned or picked. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the days when it was Darkseer, but it looks like they're gonna counter there with a Rubik and a Darkseer pick blaze. Mm, that's interesting, because S4 loves to run that Magnus, but Darkseer and Rubik are two heroes that disrupt that. We, they still end up picking up the Magnus and the Chen for Ake, um, but the Darkseer and the Rubik are heroes that can certainly deal with it. Uh, they can surge out of the slowing effect of the Lone Druid when he gets the Orb of Venom trying to go for Entangles, but most importantly, when we're talking about initiation potential, Fnatic has literally the best three heroes in my mind to try to disrupt this Magnus. They have the Darkseer, who can vacuum him away to screw him over and maybe just throw his RP on the ground. Uh, with the Rubik, you can uh, early game, you can lift him him up and interrupt a skewer for the telekinesis but more importantly later in the stage of the game you can go for the spell steal and throw the reverse polarity right back in the other direction then on top of that the puck um, obviously not going to be picked up by Hani here, but it's going to be uh, very, very effective. Some people think that the stand-in is Dendi. I looked through his aliases, and I'm not too sure about that. Obviously, he runs Dendimon as a tag, so that might be a clue there, but for right now, we'll just call him Standimon. Anyways, uh, if that is Dendi, the puck would be very, very potent, and the more important thing as far as the hero interactions is, of course, the Dream Coil and the Waning Rift and how limiting it is for Magnus to try to actually get his initiation off properly. That being said, though, Alliance picking up the draft that they pretty much just run 100% signature. If you would pay uh, one of their players to certain heroes, 100% would be Lone Druid for the Bulldog, Magnus for S4, and Aukes Chen. Lance also picking up the Alchemist there. I get the feeling we'll probably see the... Oh, actually, because I know a lot of teams have actually lately been running the Alchemist solo mid, using that very, very aggressively, and obviously going for the Shadow Blade, and just basically using him as an aggressive stunner, just initiating fights. But with Loda, most likely going to be taking the Carol here. Loda, Alliance are very somewhat predictable. You can tell exactly where they're going to put the heroes and who's going to be playing them, and I will say Loda is more than likely going to wind up in that safe lane farming with that Alchemist. They're not going to put him in the solo mid role, use Acid Spray to control the lane, 
and then get him into that early ganking aggressive stomp. And I was, uh, that's that's what I was going to say before. I know a lot of people are probably already writing Fnatic out here, but we've got to keep in mind that the format of the TPL does actually give Fnatic a fairly decent chance here. They are, as you said, Blaze, a team of curveballs. They do like to run weird strategies and play very aggressively. And in a best of one, that does give... Uh, it does give the underdog a bit of a fighting chance because obviously they just need to win one good game. So they do something surprising, catch somebody out with a good counter, then they can indeed advance forwards through the series. But I am looking forward to this Rubik. I know he's, he's like you said, he's really, really lethal against the Magnus. A lot of people say, how do people manage to get those spell steals off? I think a lot of people forget that Rubik has an insanely fast cast time. Mm -hmm. It is pretty much almost in instantaneous. So not only can he get that lift off immediately, but even even if he sees the RP goes off, he can quite easily, as long as he's not caught in the middle of it, he can throw down that spell still before Magnus even, have it, even has a chance to throw down his next spell and get through the casting animation. But it looks like Fnatic are going to pick up the Lena here. So I'm expecting to see some kind of hard carry picked up next. And they're going to go for, I assume, something defensive with a Rubik Lena. Or, I mean, it could be an aggressive trial if they really wanted to mm -hmm. try and screw Loader over. Yeah, they have a lot of different potential there. Uh, honestly, yeah, either laning situation will work for them. Fnatic has picked a very flexible lineup that has a lot of aggressive kill potential, but also they have the Darks here, who of course can survive very well on that off lane here. So uh, what we're going to see is something that does damage, since they already have the Disable setup already pretty much in the bag. We do see Rubik Lena combo, the Telekinesis into Lightstrike Ray, setting up for the laning phase. But now they are up against, I believe that is EGM, Supportive Windrunner, which can be extremely frustrating in the right hands, of course, EGMs are very, very able. This could be something that could just completely destroy the opposition here. Of course, they'll have to set it up. They'll have to maybe go for a Troll Warlord uh, in Snare, or they could go for the uh, stun coming in from the Alchemist. But one way or another, uh, they're going to be setting up so that Windrunner can get some Baller Shackles off, and that's going to be the big thing here. If there is that kind of disabled potential, that kind of lockdown uh, is something that could even bring down a Puck, who's one of the more slippery of heroes, but if he can't cast, he will die. And I really think it's going to be on the back of EGM to make the early game happen. Of course, Ake is going to be all over the place with the Chen. He always gets the, the right creeps at the right time and seems to always move in the right directions, but it's going to be hard to pin some certain targets down, especially this Antimage, now that Era has picked up. Not necessarily a signature hero of his, but certainly one that can play his style. Farm, farm, farm away, and also split push once he has that Battle Fury. Yeah, Chen is RK's most played hero. In fact, he's picked it 86 times. His second most played hero, Enchantress at 44, so he does play an absolute ton. An absolute ton of Chen. Now, I'm just looking at this with the lineup here. Era, I think they're probably going to go for it. I mean, Anti-Mage, while he can get extremely aggressive, if you get the, if you go for, if you don't go the whole Chinese thing where you go stats and level ones and stuff, you can actually get very aggressive, and he can shut down a lot of heroes just with the extra damage coming out of the mana break early on. But I do expect they'll go defensive, and pretty much what will happen is once they get him a little bit of an advantage over Bulldog then he can just be left alone to his own devices, and they can instead just rotate because if anything is going to help put pressure on Alliance. It's going to be these supports rotating across the map, setting up ganks and putting pressure on the other lanes. And Anti-Mage, of course, can look after himself in that one-on-one -on -one against mm -hmm. the Lone Druid once he gets a little bit of an advantage in the lane. Mm -hmm. Yep, but we are going to see Loda going for his signature fast Midas build, only picking up three branches and a tango. If he just gets a little bit of free farm down on that bot lane, he is going to have that Midas extremely quickly, and then just going to be rolling in the dough. Reval's Greed combined with that Midas will set him up to guarantee pick up a very, very fast low fires and just put a huge amount of pressure on the mid game, uh, whereas that will give more room for Lone Druid to not only make up for if he's lost out in any levels on the lane, but just put huge amounts of pressure on the towers. So from there, Anti-Mage will have less and less space to farm. So it's going to be a fanatic to really hold the line here. Now, one thing that I want to comment on real quick is the stand in Mon has picked up the Lena here, and I don't think he really put Dendi in a quarter in this situation. You don't run him on the support. Uh, so most likely that's somebody else, but uh, not a big deal here. We'll see exactly what this stand-in has to show for himself, but it's not too di difficult to set it up. Fly will be the main initiator here with that telekinesis. I also want to point out that they're probably actually going to spend a lot of time roaming as early as they possibly can because, look, they've actually pulled anti Mage a whole bunch of regen. He's gone straight for the poor man's shield there. And he's got, uh, as well as that, he's got the tangos along with the health potion. So they'll probably try and leave him alone as much as possible and just let him there to leech extra experience and rotate and just try and put a lot of pressure on. But in the mid lane, EGM is already in the mid lane. I don't know if he's going to stay here if he's just trying to put some pressure on No Tail. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to back off now and go back to the bottom lane. No Tail just been given a little bit of extra pressure there to try and keep him down. The Bulldog has already started to jack those creep waves. In fact, he's collected two waves here. Yeah. And is he bringing them to the Ancients? I think he's bringing them to the Ancients there. 
So yeah, it's possibly, or just behind the tier one, tier two. I think he might go right up this little juncture here on the cliff. But uh, no matter where he brings them, he's going to have some very, very secure farm. Now that they're on his half of the map, they've crossed the river. That's the threshold there. And Fly just, I'm honestly surprised that Fnatic did absolutely nothing about this bear. 100%, no right clicks put into it, no disables. And now he's even waiting a little bit, waiting for the creep wave uh, to go on by. And then, yeah, he can pretty much do whatever he wants. So uh, in this position here, the bear just has his kind of run of the mill. And I, th I think that Bulldog knows way more than I do about the aggro mechanics, but I'm sure he's doing the right thing here because he's pretty much been allowed to. There's nothing stopping him. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, back and forth, of course, the Puck is going to have an advantage early on the lane. Nice face shifts, dodging out some shockwave action, but uh, the Bottle Crow for S4 should allow him to sustain long enough to at least pick up his level 6. Oh, wow. This is actually pretty smart. He's dragged pretty much... It's almost a full double wave. He lost a couple of the melee creeps here, but he's pretty much going to deny an entire wave of creep here to the anti-mage. This is actually really, really clever from Bulldog and nicely done indeed. So he's going to deny that full wave and manage to farm this up as well. I've got to say you are correct though. The fact that he's not putting... The fact that the supports from the Dyer team weren't actually putting much pressure on the bear was kind of odd. And like right now it's only a 100 gold bounty, but of course the patch coming up, it will change that bounty to 300 gold if memory serves me correctly. So knocking down a bear quickly on is going to be a huge, huge boost to supports. And actually, you're going to see a lot of lone druids have to be a lot more careful for those bears. I don't want to be giving away gold, 300 gold, especially early on. That's pretty much a hero's kill worth of gold. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be fairly dangerous for them to do that. But it looks like Magnus should have his bottle by now. Yeah, here it is. It's just coming out right now, as well as the boots. And he's just going to spam Shockwave mm -hmm. and really put some pressure there on No-Tail. no, -tail. no -tail, in fact, I'm just going to look at the CS there. No-Tail is actually falling a little bit behind in CS. And I think it's just purely on the spam from Shockwave. Yeah, exactly that. Magnus just being able to put out so much damage. That is actually his second bottle, so he's in a great position to just keep his mana flowing. 90 mana cost for that shockwave. It's just so spammable, and he keeps on putting that aggression. Now, up on the top lane, Bulldog is sitting around 200 HP, but should be able to salve that up to no problem. Question is, will there be any tower pressure in the fact that he has to fall back momentarily? It's been an interesting matchup here between Bulldog and Era. Era is so desperate for farm, he goes behind the enemy's tier 1, to the point that it's almost a 1 versus 1 matchup between the Anti-Mage and the Lone Druid, where, of course, Lone Druid has a significant advantage, and I think that's exactly what he was intending to do. We do see the Magnus takes a little bit of harassment on the mid lane, but is able to uh, secure a rune, bottle to full, and then just send that right back on the courier. So now we'll be able to bring him back up to full as soon as he kind of delivers out that uh, sustaining charges with the, the refresh there. I'm not even sure if it's Eros specifically that are really like, I think Eros moving in obviously, I don't think it's him so much struggling with farm. I think it's more that the fact that they have just realized that they're seriously struggling. Fnatic is seriously struggling to get experience on their supports. They're both level one still, and the fact that he was denying those full waves. might be from Flood though, they get the stun going on the top lane, and Eros doing a lot of right click damage. Dragon Slave unfortunately won't be enough though. Yeah, see the stand in, stand him on there took a ton of damage as well. The creep just hammering away at him. But yeah, like right now, they're still, they've only just hit level two, definitely struggling for experience there. And this is really going to limit their ability. If they're still in level one, it's really going to limit their ability to rotate and put pressure on the other lanes. Should also mention that Darkseer said, Trixie, who's the obviously Fnatic's go to suicide lane, just said, screw it, this isn't going to work. And it's gone straight into the jungle. In fact, I think he might have started there. He did start off with a stout shield as well. So he's able to tank that quite easily. Yeah. But by abandoning that lane, he guarantees a Loda will get that farm. We already see that Midas Rush would be up on the courier. A four and a half minute Midas for an Alchemist. He's not maxing Grievel's Greed, surprisingly, so maybe he wants to push out a little bit more uh, with that Acid Spray. Now seeing Darkseer rotate back on up, he is does have his Soul Ring, and I think that's what he was waiting for in order to actually feel comfortable to spam out Iron Shell on the lane. Mm. Once he gets that, of course, he can use the double shells. I mean, right now, both these heroes are going to be in a sort of a standoff position. Trixie obviously won't want to get too close to the acid spray. The negative armor really, really does hurt, especially as the supports come out and start harassing. At the same time, the double iron shell does do a lot of damage, even to a hero who's just trying to passively farm, not being harassed. If he gets too close to it, it really does burn quite a bit. And as you said, yeah, he hasn't gone for the max Grievel's Greed, so maybe we will. It looks like they might just. Maybe Lotus just said, you know what? We do actually have an opportunity here if I just get that. Oh, mid lane. A bit of a kill mid. Oh, that's so big. He had a regeneration room bottled up, so he could have easily out just won by a war of attrition up against No-Tail, but No-Tail getting his ultimate there and getting the damage he needed to. Look at the skill build, maxing out Waning Rift. He only has a little bit of an orb. It's not as great for farming creeps, but when it comes down to screwing over the Magnus, it is just the perfect setup here. So No-Tail just really delivering hurt, getting first blood, getting that solo experience. He is level seven and he's gonna be moving in towards level eight very quickly as well. A lot of damage, a lot of gank potential from this guy. And of course, it sets him well off for his blink dagger as well.
I mean, they do the same amount of damage. Like, both Waning uh, Orb and the Rift do the mm -hmm. same amount of damage. And you can probably get in a bigger AoE burst if he gets in the Waning Rift. And it's more about the fact that, like, they're the same damage and you get much, much better to save from the high levels and Waning Rift. So like you said, you know, it's not, not even just the Magnus, but even just if he lands the Waning Rift on the Rubik, on the... Sure. Uh, Le oh, not the Rubik, the Lena, the freaking supports, the Windrunner and the Chan, that really does help stuff them over quite a bit in the middle of those fights rather than because like a level one waning rift is what what two one like quarter of a second like three quarters of a second silence is absolutely nothing but a bit of a smoke gank here from aki possibly might be trying to swing around and help bulldog out here and they could quite easily pick a hero off although it looks like bulldog is some serious trouble that gets melted far too many heroes putting pressure on him yeah i mean egm was there but the fact that they had also brought the puck in and he was able to put out that burst of magic damage it was uh, enough to bring him down last time we saw that combo there was just not enough damage from those two supports uh but this time adding in the Puck just made sure 100% they had that available. Now TPing on in, Bulldog is about to hit level 5, summoning up his rank 2 bear, soon to be rank 3, but they're going aggressive. No-Tail has that ultimate available. If you could get the Dream Coil on anyone right here, it could be great, but we do see flanking on in. There's going to be Ake with a bunch of creeps, double Hellbow Smashers on the stand in doing a lot of damage here. Power Shot going across. He drops down to 60 HP, but still the other individuals for Fnatic are staying active. There's going to be a big entangle, though. They're going to surge him away as well as throwing out that orb, so... A lot of damage going back and forth. Era getting entangled up. Has to watch himself there as the Hellbear's just doing work. Bringing him down very, very quickly. So it looks like Trixie might be... No, he's just going to dodge in the opposite direction. Aki was coming. Could have dropped a nice big test of faith into him, which might have almost killed him. In fact, I mean, you get a good roll on that test of faith. It can be pretty devastating indeed. I'm actually looking forward, though, for the vacuums. The vacuums from Trixie are going to be a big factor in this game. I mean, of course, you've got the RPs. are going to be really nasty. But I mean, if you get a good vacuum and then land a dream call after that, that is going to be utterly crippling to Alliance's side. Mm -hmm. Especially if they can pick off that Chen. That Chen, I think, is going to be instrumental. Whether or not they can survive these fights, it's going to come down to Chen landing those mechs, landing those uh, global, well, landing the global heal the healing hand, so we'll see what he can do here, but oh, it looks like they're going to counter here, uh, Alliance is going to push in, get this early tower up in the top lane, and this is going to make a lot of trouble for Animage to farm, because he's going to quickly lose control of this side of the map, especially if Chen starts getting aggressive and using his jungle. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to find, Aero is going to have a lot of trouble keeping his gold up at this rate. Yeah, a couple good things coming out for Alliance, are of course picking up the tier, oh no, actually it was denied by Lina, stand him on! No, what, I'm actually not sure about that. He, was, he says he denied the tower, but he was on bottom uh, lane at the time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he denied, bottom, bottom, uh, he denied the bottom yeah. tier one. Sorry about that. He denied the bottom tier one, which was just kind of sitting there, uh, sub 10% HP. The top one did, of course, go down to, uh, yeah, I believe the lone druid. But uh, another big thing down on bottom was the alchemist. able to. He got dream coiled up by the initiation from the puck but was able to TP out just before the Light Striker landed. I mean, milliseconds off, but just in that time frame he needed to actually make things work. Trixie will to eat a Shackle Shot here, but it's not going to latch, and that's the Faith Roll. Oh, it is enough! Wow! EGM, rank 3 Power Shot, the perfect timing to get the maximum damage output, and was able to walk away with another nice kill, so uh, that is going to be setting them up here. That is actually their first kill of the game, but on top of that, the Tower Kill means that the gold advantage is securely in their favor. I want to make a point that EGM has realized, you know, I don't really need ability here. I'm playing support Windrunner. He hasn't bothered ranking Windrunner. He's like, you know what, let me just get a much higher level pack uh, Shackle Shot, get a higher level Power Shot as well, and just really contribute to these fights. So I like his build here. He's realized, you know, I just don't need that ability to reposition at the moment because I'm going to be hanging back and just supporting from the rear as much as possible. It looks like they should be able to get this kill, and yeah, Windrunner are going to take that tower kill in mid. But that's what I was talking about earlier, the fact that see Chen still using the enemy's jungle, still using the dire jungle, and how they're putting this pressure on, it's really going to cause a lot of trouble for Animage. He's not going to be able to duck in there and get that farm. Same for even Darkseer. I mean, Darkseer obviously tanking creeps and then getting picked off. And you see Alliance putting up these aggressive wards in the enemy jungle, so they can see exactly what's going on. The Dream Call, though, lands on the top lane. Looks like they're going to try and bring down Bulldog here. Bulldog careful not to snap the tether at the moment, although it will snap in the end there, and they will pick him off. Mm -hmm. Too many heroes going to bring him him down, Chen not having enough mana for his ult. Looks like Chen will also get brought down here, please. Yeah. Iron Shell damage, the blink, the right click. They should be able to pin him down here. No tail on the chase as well. It just puts Aki in a terrible position and he should be dropped. Uh, I want to mention that EGM could, might have been able to save uh, his ally if there was a successful shackle shot. Unfortunately, it went on the wrong of the two targets. No tail was behind compared to the Darkseer in front. So if that had been switched up a little bit, maybe the situation would have been a little different as the Lone Druid is extremely t tanky in his true form. But unfortunately, that just didn't work out for him. And on top of that, Bulldog not having a TP scroll meant that as soon as he was locked in place there, Lena could always prevent him from getting on out of there. Same thing with the vacuum from Darkseer. So very, very unfortunate for Bulldog to be that far forward without any kind of real escape. 
and from there they just didn't really have the way rotation they needed. So they do lose a couple more kills, putting points on the board four for one in favor of Fnatic, but right now the gold just really doesn't seem to work out for them. We do see, of course, it's still hovering above 5,500 as far as that gold graph goes, and that's mostly because of those towers. Uh, tower kill in the mid on top and a deny on the bottom means that they just have such an advantage that Fnatic haven't answered back with. They don't really have the push for it. I want also make a point that they, pretty much you look at the supports here, experience per minute, we've got double the rate pretty much for the Alliance supports. So you're sitting on 237 to 252, and in fact, even Bulldog is managing to gain more experience than them. They've really been struggling, and I think it's purely come down to the shenanigans Bulldog was pulling in that top lane, mm -hmm. messing with them. They haven't been able to farm nearly as hard as the Alliance supports, so you see that Chen managing to get much farther ahead. Lena, in fact, still only level 4, hasn't even managed to get even close to ultimate at this point in time. Yeah. Same for the poor old Rubik. I mean, Rubik, they really need his ult to you. We're talking about how critical it's going to be up against the Magnus. And right now, they're just so under farm, so poor. I mean, Rubik's pretty much carrying boots and wards. What's Lena got there? Just naked boots. You compare that to Windrunner, she's already finished her arcane boots. Shen is well on his way to a mech. In fact, he's almost there. He's about 500 more gold, and he'll have that up. And once he has that mech, between his ultimate and that mech, they going to create alliance. Alliance are going to be so hard to kill. They're going to have the bear pushing and trying to help Siege Towers. In fact, he's working towards that armlet right now. And having that double heal and then Loda, like you said, you know, going, no, not going for the Max Grievous Screech. You know, let's, let's get the Max at Acid Spray and the Unstable Concoction instead. That's going to put him in a much better position to siege and fight before the 20 minute mark or so. Absolutely, and that's his main intention here. I'm assuming Lothar's will be his next pickup here, and that's going to be great against, as you mentioned, these low-level supports. I mean, if Lena's only sitting at level 5, now about to get level 6, it's just putting her in this position where she's going to have low armor, low HP, and a quick Shadow Blade concoction is going to take out pretty much all of her HP. And that's just going to be ridiculous initiation potential. So I assume that Lothar's moving in that direction very, very quickly. And uh, that's definitely something to look out for there, because Alchemist is just one of those carries that can really, really feed on low HP targets if he wants to go and gank them up there. So, um, a lot of aggression there, and that means that a lot of their value, Fnatic's lineup here, rests on the shoulders of Era. Finishing up that battle three is only 450 away, and he needs to get that going before he can actually get some split push to give the support some space. Because, as you mentioned, they just weren't able to farm the neutrals early on, and as such, comparatively speaking, Alliance is in a much better position in that regard. Definitely. I mean, that's a big thing. I mean, those pulls, the bear pulls, not only that, it's just making a lot of trouble for them. So we see the Shadow Blade was finished there by the Oh, RP on top things. lane. Big damage coming out from S4. Gonna go on the skewer onto No Tail. Already used the phase shift, so it will be dropped down. S4 getting the perfect rotation timing. Didn't even have to invis to initiate. They set it up for him. Wanting to go on Bulldog so hardcore, but he limps away with 65 HP. And now that sets up Magnus for his Blink Dagger. That sets up Alchemist for Shadow Blade. Already using it on the mid lane. The concoction will fly out and fly. Can't answer back. A rank 1 telekinesis all he has and the stun is long enough that he doesn't even get the chance to use it we're gonna just see alliance running rampant now that they have these two key items blink and shadow blade and they just have so much map control now and see you saw that unstable concussion <laughs> half half of rubric's health just completely shredded him that's not gonna have they're not gonna have a chance here when it comes to this um below when it comes to this Alchemist here, it's going to put so much pressure, it's going to make pretty much anyway. he's not going to be able to push out either, he's not going to be able to push out and even find this top lane, he's not going to be able to step out from the tower because it's just this huge threat of Alchemist just coming out, stunning you and then drilling, absolutely drilling you, and you just look at Andy Mage's armor right now, he can put him into the negatives just by, well, just by throwing in the acid spray, it's going to make it so easy to shred him. Mm -hmm. As it looks like, in fact, the Alliance, they know. They can see Lena, they can see Rubik right there. They can, in fact, take a run at them. Here comes a Chen Creep Army, oh. going to take a run there on Lena. Light Strike Array coming down, but it's not going to be enough there. Or maybe it will, actually. Concoction no, will no, connect. Look at that concoction. Oh, my goodness. So much damage. <laughs> Maxing that out is ridiculous. Oh my goodness, great initiation by Ake, by the way. They had the Observer Ward in place already, so they knew he was there. Uh, I was thinking Loda wouldn't be able to actually disengage from this uh, Dire Ward without them knowing about him being able to flee away, but Ake proved me wrong. They're setting him up with a single Centaur Clap after the Ensnare that was setting it up, so they're just really, really good rotation there. Now Fly's like, oh, they definitely have a ward here. Unfortunately, it's only got 20 seconds left on it, so they're not really gaining that much control. Instead, getting skewered on up, Fly taking a lot of hits here. It was only going to be a very brief stun. They are going to be able to surge him away if necessary though so they will be able to let him fall back but in the meantime tier 2 taking a lot of damage on top and now teleporting down bottom Alchemist gonna force no tail back and just keep on farming away that GPM right now is at almost 600 and it's just gonna go up from here I just want to make a point. That is exactly how much map control Fnatic have lost here. The fact they can't even safely deward on their own side of the map. The supports are under so much pressure they try and deward just I mean it's only a few steps away from the tower and they almost end up dying 
thanks to Magnus just jumping on top of them. That's exactly how badly it's going for them right now. Lena, though, managing to hit level 6, has picked her ult. Rubik, though, still not quite level 6. Getting close. RP in the mid, though. Trixie will be over. Oh, maybe not. If Rubik's proc here, he will probably go down. And he will get cleaned up by a shockwave as well. And in fact, Loda was skulking about with the Shadow Blade also. He was not going to have any room to run. Looks like they might even take the top tower here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Winner are picking that off. Unfortunately, I mean, Standinmon not even getting the chance to deny this one at all. And now with the burst damage coming in long range, they should be able to finish it. Just a couple more right clicks. There's a shackle to give them the right clicks they need. So they will be able to bring down the Lena here. She just didn't have the movement speed for it. And uh, of course, I'm kind of surprised that combined together, Era and the stand-in weren't able to get that deny when there wasn't really anything pressuring it at the time. But that's just uh, another unfortunate thing, and the gold graph continues to get out of control. Now, Armlet is up on the bear, and Bulldog is just going to go to town. Whether it's sieging the high ground, just throwing away the bear's life so that he can guarantee a lot of damage on the tier 3s, or just setting it up so they can get the Aegis really, really quickly. Uh, right now, we do see that EGM is being tested face back. He's going to get his 4 staff here, and I think once he is back up and running, they're going to be ready to actually act very, very directly up against Fnatic here. I mean, they've already been controlling it, already been pushing them further and further out of the jungle, denying it so that Era only just now gets his Battle Fury at 16 minutes in his safe lane farm, which was relatively uncontested by the Bulldog until he was able to pull the Creep Wave. But, yeah, the end result is now we're going to see that Alliance can pretty much do whatever they want, and I'm look looking at Roche primarily. Actually, I'm going to make another point. Alliance, the other half, the other reason I reckon Alliance are being so hyper-aggressive here is the fact that Loda did make mention uh, earlier on in the lobby that S4 is short on time and has to leave fairly soon. So that's probably a partial reason why they're being so aggressive towards Fnatic at the moment. But here we go. A blinking away anti manager almost getting caught out by the Shadow Blade on the Alchemist there. will end up stunning himself. No big deal, though. As it looks like they have actually managed to find the enemy wards, and they are just going to try and pick that off Fnatic now, de-warding their jungle. Still being harassed heavily by the Chen army, though. <laughs> I mean, this is a Chen all by himself, but they're so afraid of what he might have right behind him that they're not willing to go on it. They're like, okay, there's a troll, there's a Sedar, there's the little Chen. He's 8 HP, or eight, eight, level 8 and 800 HP, and... They're just not really willing to jump on that just yet, even though they have no tail with that long range initiation now going in an orb. Nope, they won't scout him out. So, just gonna do. Oh, the Dream Coil whiffing. No tail. Not gonna even be able to pick up the neutral creeps, let alone the Chen kill itself. Yeah, they pick up the Troll Summoner. They might get one out of it, but my goodness. Using up that ultimate, nothing's going oh. right for them right now. Oh, that the Chen creep denied Aki, refusing to lose even part of his army there, throwing his ult down on that. I should mention S4 has been running around the enemy ancients looking for a potential kill there. It looks like he might actually find Lena in the mid. Maybe? No, he's deciding not to go for it. Lena's just going to manage to get away there. But yes, he has been wandering around with that blink and invisibility, looking for somebody to pick off. Looks like he's actually just going to go towards... In fact, he's going to go the whole way. In fact, he might even find Lena. Yeah. Lena, though, has got the... No, she's too far away from that ward. S4 will back up. So yeah, here we go, Blaze. It looks like they're just going to settle down and siege the mid-tier 2. Yeah, most reasonable situation. The last outer tier tower, you've got the Bulldog push. We're actually going to see a little bit of counter TP going on to Era, making sure he can't push down the top tier 1. Don't really, if in this situation, they're in such a good spot, they don't have to take and trade. They can just take something for nothing and make sure the anti doesn't get anything out of it. So Bulldog will secure that tower. They have Roche completely in the bag anytime they want to go for it because they have the RP and they have the Asset Spray and most importantly, just the control right now with all these towers down. Fnatic just really can't get it together to be in the right position to deal with these kind of things and along with that, Magnus is moving very rapidly towards that BKB. So once Black King Bar is up, the Puck will be very little concern for S4 to set up his initiations, and from there, Fnatic doesn't really stand too much of a chance unless Anti-Mage pulls a rabbit out of the hat, honestly, because they're in just such a desperate spot. Indeed. I'm going to say even Chen, I mean, he's next item, he might even just want to pick up a gem. Once they once they get that gem, I mean, it's pretty much lines out Fnatic, they're not going to have any map control. Like right now, Fnatic are managing to eke a little bit of map control out. You see, they're throwing down some sneaky wards, one in the mid there, and they manage to do a little bit of counter warding on their own side and keep some wards up. But once a gem comes out from Alliance, there'll be no sight for them whatsoever. And with no sight at all, and they're so far behind already, they will not want to step foot outside of that base at all. It'd be so dangerous. On top of that, see the counter wards being thrown in the lane, like... They won't even, Loda won't even need to worry about them mm -hmm. if he has got the jam running around with him. I should also mention that Loda is well on his way to finishing off an assault Karast as well. Yeah. 
So they look like they're moving in towards Roche. They get the Empower. Yeah, they're going to go for it here. Rubik did steal Acid Spray. Could uh, harass them out a little bit of the pit with that since it lasts so long. But here's that Assault Kuros coming in for Loda. And from there, the damage output is going to be crazy. Look at this. Negative sick Armor. Acid Spray plus Assault Kuros combined together. This Roche drops in moments to only two heroes rickling it down. Actually, a hero and a bear. So in that position, Loda picking up the Aegis and taking not but like 12 seconds to actually set that up. EGM is going to get bursted hard, but here comes S4 jumping in with a gigantic RP. Three man, there's a skewer dropping everybody down. No tail limps away, but everybody else falling in his wake. No tail has only 300 HP, goes for the orb, but already used the phase shift, jaunting and S4 with the body blocks coming on through. Loda gonna try drop him down with this concoction here. The phase shift on cooldown, he will get him here. Finally getting it across, but man, that initiation from S4 was really the nail in the coffin, just hammering it in. Really, really great ultimate from him. Yeah, the negative armor is such a huge factor here. You look at it, and you look at the alchemist, you're like, he's only swinging for 140 damage. It's not that much, but you combine his attack speed with the fact that he's pretty much doubling his damage output with the sheer amount of negative armor he's throwing down these heroes. Even Anti-Mage is looking at, what, negative, well, negative 3, negative 4 armor. And you look at the squishy supports like Rubik, he's looking at, like, negative 10 armor. It's ridiculous. He's taking so much damage. He pretty much gets 2, 3 shotted by Loda there, so it's no chance at all to stand up. And already we've got the GGs coming. I mean, 20 minutes... I think we all knew what was going to happen here. Just Loda and the rest of Alliance getting so aggressive in this game and just completely taking control. And I've got to say, Bulldog, I mean, we're talking about his mastery of the creep shenanigans and the pulling. He really knows what's up. I really like how he did that pull, denying mm -hmm. a full creep wave, going for a second one as well, and then pulling a double wave back and being able to farm it in safety. Bulldog definitely mastered the Lone Druid indeed. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he was kind of the one that pioneered it in the first place, and now just making it work so darn hard. I mean, we're we're talking about the fact that Fnatic had a level advantage, but despite that, didn't have any kinds of levels on their supports. They had, or sorry, they had a kill advantage. They had three or four kills uh, up on Alliance in the early game, but it didn't really translate into higher levels in the Rubik and the Lina. So Laguna, Spellsteel, they were delayed, whereas Alliance just freely farmed up the jungle actively with the Chen and the Windrunner together. Alchemist got his free farm on the lane, and Lone Druid just screwed them over. It really wasn't a point of contention on any other lane but that top one. I mean, the, the mid back and forth, the, he did uh, get a lot of CS advantage as for up against No Tail, but beyond that, it really was about that top lane. Admiral Bulldog with the creep pulls all the way on around, he was able to set it up where they just completely screwed over Fnatic, and that was an amazing sight to see. Bulldog really, really sucking it to him, and we see it on the experience per minute. Looking down at that poor little Rubik, he's sitting at 133 experience per minute, just couldn't get anything going for him, and on top of that, of course, Bracers and Boots, that tells the story right there. When you're up against a Assault Karas, Lothar's Alchemist with S4's kind of initiation, there's very, very little hope for a Rubik with that low of HP, that low of armor. So, good game, well played to Alliance, but they just steamroll out of control in only 21 minutes. So that's going to be it for us for this first game of the Reavers Cup here. It's going to go the way of Alliance, eliminating Fnatic here, but Alliance will move on forward, and we're going to see who they're going to be up against. The next match that we're going to be seeing here is going to be Vers Virtus Pro versus DD. So very, very interesting, kind of Russia French team versus the, the purely Russian one. But, yeah, this is going to be a sight to see. So coming up in just a few minutes, guys, stay on tune. Thank you guys so much for tuning on in.